Uh, I did it again. Don't you hate those things when you promise yourself, I'm not going to end up with this same type person. I'm not going to end up in this same situation. I'm not going to end up in this same mess. I'm not going to do that again, only to see us around the same scenery all over again. I said last week, I said again, it's not terminal. It can break and it can change. And I'm going to give you information on how God can change it. Take this journey with me. Let's go. I read this last week, but I want to go much deeper today. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. If there's anybody in the room, say we're going deeper. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your word. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares, and let us run with endurance, the, with endurance the race set before us. The race is life. I'm supposed to endure. Life sometimes is not pleasurable. It has to be endured according to this. So I am supposed to live life in such a way that I have positioned myself for the long haul. So now that immediately takes me out of the lust of the eye, the lust of flesh, and pride of life <coughs> because all three of those are about now. God says we don't run out of now. <coughs> we run positioning ourselves for the long haul. Run with endurance the race set before you. There are two things you got to do to be successful for the long haul. Look at everybody in the room with you and say, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm in this marriage for the long haul. I'm in this business for the long haul. I'm in this relationship for the long haul. I am in growing as a man and a woman of God for the long haul. This is not a short-term deal with me. I don't care what you're going through. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I am in this for the long haul. If your faith is wavering and you You've been shaken to your boots. I dare you to confess with your mouth. I am in this thing for the long haul. Run with endurance. Shoo, hallelujah. The race set before you. Two things we got to do. You say, Pastor, you told us about this. Yeah, but I'm about to go deep. Lay aside every weight and sin. Every weight and every sin. Every weight is not a sin. Every sin is a weight. Now, I want to go deep in this. I want to exhaust it as much as I can. Galatians 6, 5 says that every man is to bear his own load. These two scriptures would seem like they contradict each other. So, Galatians 6, 5 is admitting that I have a weight that I have to, to, to carry. There is a burden that I have to bear. Let each man carry his own load. But then Hebrews says, lay aside every weight. The Bible's not talking about lay aside the things that are common to life. You know, well, I don't like working. I, I'm, somebody else can work for me. That's not what it's talking about. When the Bible says every man should carry his own weight, that means the things that you are responsible for, the daily tasks and burdens that God has placed you in stewardship of. It is not somebody else's responsibility to make your paycheck. It's not somebody else's responsibility to raise your children. Come on, it's not somebody else's responsibility to make sure your life works. All those things are under your responsibility. But when the Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, we're talking about weights, burdens, bearing, load, all this in the same context. The Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens. Wait a minute, but I thought right here it said, bear your own load. Yes, that which is common to you. But bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. It means when you see a brother that is having to deal with something excess that is not common. So you're sitting over here and he was going about life doing fine. And then everybody in his life gets hit with COVID. And then all of a sudden he's been out of work for three months. Okay. He now 
has been hit with an unnecessary load that is difficult to bear. Maybe you can keep the children and babysit for a while. Maybe you can say we had a little bit put aside in our savings, but we don't want you to miss two mortgage payments. We're just going to bless you right here. And by the way, if somebody needs to eat supper, we always have a little left over. Those are where we get involved in somebody else's life when we see an inordinate load or burden coming on them that is not common. My job is common. Providing for my house is common. Raising my kids is common. Making sure my wife and my marriage is strong, that is common. But when I am burdened with excess beyond those things, that is when the law of Christ comes into effect and we bear one another's burdens. And the Bible says we are like a body. When one suffers, we all suffer. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. I'm hey, Shakata. Mm. I just got I got so much running through me. I'm trying to stay on track. Whew, do you feel it? I feel the Spirit of God even right now as I'm speaking it. God, use it and rivet it in somebody's heart in the name of Jesus. So I want you to understand all these scriptures. God's not contradicting himself. They have different applications. Okay? So lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. This is good. I heard this scripture quoted a lot, but let's break it down and see what it means. We're talking about weights. We're talking about burdens. We're talking about bearing burdens. And we're talking about difference between a weight and a sin. So if I'm going to run with endurance, I've got to lay these things aside. Because they cause me not to endure. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with every temptation will make a way of escape that you will be able to bear it. You will be able to bear it. The first word for temptation here means proving or a test of your fidelity or your faithfulness. There is no test or proving of your faithfulness to God except that which is common. Whenever we go through something, we think we're the only people in the world that's ever gone through that. And we isolate ourselves and we mourn and we sulk and we grieve because nobody's had it as bad as us. But the Bible says these tests in life and this test actually means approving of your faithfulness. In other words, when this test comes, will you still serve God? Jesus prophesied to Peter, Peter, I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. In other words, he made him understand you have overestimated your strengths and you have underestimated your weaknesses and you've been able to serve God because your service has not been put to the test. But you and your faithfulness is about to be tested. Your fidelity to Christ and all these bold statements of commitment that you make, they're about to be put to the fire. And when they were put to the fire, Peter found out his commitment and his fidelity to the Lord was not anywhere near what he thought. That's what this scripture is saying. So it says that God will never give me more than I can bear but there is no test except that which is common. Whatever you're going through, somebody has already gone through it and come out a winner and I want to encourage you that you are not the only one in this time of testing. There's somebody fighting it and there's somebody winning and you just needed to know that today. You are not alone in this battle. That there are people that have a testimony and they can already claim the thing that you're going through God has already brought them out of can somebody shout amen right there where you are hallelujah now the second word for temptation every temptation or test of your fidelity is common everybody is facing it and been through it let me read the second temptation ready but God who is God is faithful will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. That second word means an attempt. So there's no test except one that everybody has to face. And when this attempt is made at you, God will not let it be more than what you can bear. The third one right here, let me read about the third temptation. 
but with the temptation will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So let me rephrase the whole thing. Whenever your fidelity is being tested, God will not let that attempt be more than you can bear. But he will always provide a way of escape so that you can bear it. I did a word study on the word bear, and this is amazing. I've never seen it translated like this. The word is dunamis. Power. Authority. He will never let what you're going through be greater than your own power and authority. This scripture right here tells me that no matter how bad it is and no matter how you feel, you've still got power over it. You can still take authority. I'm about to run through the camera and come right there and preach right where you are. Woo, hallelujah. God has given you power and authority over the thing that feels like it's killing you and taking you down right now. That's the promise of God. So every test that has come to you, somebody else has already been through it and won. God will not let the enemy's attempt be more than what you can handle, but will provide a way of escape and never let it be above your dunamis, your power and your authority. This is the same word that Jesus said, when you, you shall receive power dunamis when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In other words, it will never be more. Your temptation will never be greater than your dunamis. Your dunamis will always be greater than your temptation. Your power and your authority. Gee, I'm breaking this down next week. Jesus was tempted in the garden in all points and at every time he overpowered the temptation. He overcame the temptation and God is saying that self-same Jesus, that, that self-same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in your mortal body. Maybe it's that you're trying to beat your enemy in the flesh, but you have a Holy Ghost down on the inside of you and when you tap into that power of the Holy Ghost, you can always take authority over your temptation and instead of succumbing to the temptation next time, you can overcome it because you have authority over it in the name of Jesus and you have power over it by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give somebody 10 seconds to give their God a praise. I don't want you to get thrown out of a restaurant. I don't want you to get in trouble at work. But if you're in a place where you can, somebody declare out of your mouth, I've got power over this thing. I've got power over this thing. I've got authority over this thing. I take authority over this eating habit. I take authority over this drug addiction. I take authority over this sexual addiction. I, I take authority over this repetitive behavior. I take authority over this repeated temptation. In the name of Jesus, you've got to square up your feet, square up your shoulders and know who you are and know what you've got in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I've got to move on, but that's shouting territory right there. Can I continue forward? Hallelujah. God said when you are being tempted, you are being dragged away by something that is already in you. And if you have a vulnerability or a weakness in your life, the devil does not attack the place where you're strong. He attacks the place where you're vulnerable. We all have weaknesses that we need to get away from. In this series, Temptations, Ron Carpenter shows us how we can be free from what's holding us back. If you keep going into the fire, keep going into the fire, fire burns you. You are supposed to learn when you get burned not to touch it again. But if you keep falling in the fire and you keep falling in the water and you get out out, but you go back to the fire and you get out draw but you go back to the water a seed has now become a sight this six message series is available for your gift of thirty dollars or more call now and we'll include free shipping and an mp3 download card call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen now we'll always provide a way of escape he said, you need to lay it aside. The lay it aside would be if I had a backpack that was weighing me down, I literally shift the weight. So God is saying, you got to take this area in you, which is keeping you from enduring, causing you to continually sin, and you've got to shift the weight of it. How do we do that? Let's keep reading. I'm glad you asked. Hebrews, let me turn back to it. I'm reading it straight off the pages today. So give me just a second to go back to these scriptures. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Let me read it again. 
Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares. That word ensnares actually means encompass and encircle. Encompass and encircle. <coughs> Help me, Lord. The sin that builds a circle. The sin that has now created a cycle. The sin that's got me going round and round. This could be so many things. But I want to talk about the sin. I don't want to talk about the weight. Let's talk about the sin. Notice the and not a. It seems that God is saying everybody has a the sin. It's the sin that easily gets us. And it's the sin that encompasses us. Encompass and circles, the root word being circle or cycle. Lay aside the sin that creates a cycle. Oh, who wants to break the cycle? In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. The cycles are being broken even as the power of the Word of God goes forth right now. Lord, Holy Spirit, minister through these cameras. Minister through these phones and iPads and TVs and computers. Minister right now in the name of Jesus. I don't care if it's through YouTube, iChurch, Facebook. I don't care how they're watching. If they're watching on TV, God, do something in the name of Jesus that makes them aware that you are here right now in this Word to go to work on the inside of them. The sin that so easily encircles. Seeds. A sin can be a seed. And the Bible says when we've sinned, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But sin that goes unconfronted continually and unrepented and you ignore it, you justify it, you make excuses for it. Those are the sins that try to make a cycle and take you round and round and round. You know, I never liked running on a treadmill. When I lift weights, I lift weights real fast, and I try to do my cardio while I lift weights. In other words, I don't take a rest. You know, some people go and do a set, and they look in the mirror for 10 minutes. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm moving the whole time because I try to keep my heart rate up by not taking a rest. The reason I hate running on a treadmill is this right here. I always think after I look down and I've run a mile or whatever, how much ground I could have taken if I were not on this cycle. I wonder where your life would be if you were not on this cycle. I wonder how far you would advance if you were not on this cycle. I wonder how much wealth you would have accumulated if you weren't on this cycle. I wonder, uh, cycles. When a seed is put into the ground, it is most easily dealt with in its early stage. Literally, an acorn has the power to become a mighty oak tree, but after a few weeks, it's a small sprout in the ground. I have the ability with two fingers to pull it out of the ground by the root. And if I lay it down and don't replant it, it will die. But if I leave that seed in the ground unconfronted for 30 years, it's a mighty oak tree and nothing less than a bulldozer in a day's work to pull it up out of the ground. Some of us, there may be something just getting started. You can still easily pull it up. Some of you may be dealing with something that has plagued you for decades. It may take a more powerful force from God to do it. But nevertheless, it's coming out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cycles. Cycles. 
two instances I want to give you. <clears throat> when Martha criticized Mary for not helping her prepare for Jesus' coming to the house, Jesus looked at Martha and said, Martha, Martha, you are troubled about many things. That word trouble is akin to this word here, encompass. Martha, he said, you are walking around in circles. What she was doing was not a sin, but it was a weight. What was the weight? Not irresponsibility, but over-responsible. We talk about people that are irresponsible and won't take responsibility for things, but there are other people that are over-responsible and feel like they're responsible for everything that they shouldn't even have their nose in. And she's trying to handle everything. And Jesus said, you are on a cycle because you're weighted down with over-responsibility thinking you need to take care of things that I really don't care about. I don't care if the pillows are fluffed. I care about Mary's worship here at my feet. Two more examples. Peter. When Jesus found Peter, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That was his old life. He was a fisherman. He spent three and a half years with Jesus. Pardon me. And then when Jesus came under deep scrutiny and under crucifixion, everybody fled. Peter denied it. Jesus is raised from the dead. John 21 goes back on the shore. And the scripture in John 21 starts out like this. Peter said, I'm going fishing. They were disciples. Disciples were the internship. That was the training ground. And Jesus is about to go and the disciples are going to transition from a place of learning to a place of authority. They are going to continue the miraculous ministry of Jesus in their apostolic authority. And right when they were about to transition from discipleship to apostleship, all of a sudden an old thing comes right back around and revisits Peter. Peter, when he said I was going fishing, was basically saying, I'm going back to the old way of life. Cyclical. Many times you know that you're fighting a, a cyclical sin because it tries to revisit you at strategic moments. How is one, how do you know that God is about to promote you? many times when something from the past tries to come around and revisit you and right at the entry of apostleship something way back here cycles its way back around and revisits his life i prophesy in the name of jesus almighty god that this enemy we have seen like the Egyptians following the Israelites, we will see no more. And I thank you, Lord, that these old sins will not revisit our life and bring destruction and try to thwart our future. But I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, the strong Son of God, I declare the cycles are broken, the yokes are destroyed, the burdens are removed. Break this cycle in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that we're free to pursue our future. When you are being tempted, you are being dragged away by something that is already in you. And if you have a vulnerability or a weakness in your life, the devil does not attack the place where you're strong. He attacks the place where you're vulnerable. We all have weaknesses that we need to get away from. In this series, Temptations, Ron Carpenter shows us how we can be free from what's holding us back. If you keep going into the fire, keep going into the fire, fire burns you. You are supposed to learn when you get burned not to touch it again. But if you keep falling in the fire and you keep falling in the water and you get out, but you go back to the fire and you get out draw, but you go back to the water, a seed has now become a sight. This six message series is available for your gift of $30 or more. Call now and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.
As always, and I've been saying this for many, many years, I hope, sincerely, I hope that you're enjoying these messages. And uh, I know that when I'm studying and investing in the time to prepare these messages, I do them in such a way where I hope they communicate well and I hope that you can understand them. I, I feel like I've failed as a communicator if you don't have something you can take with you and begin to implement it in your life. That is when the Bible becomes real is when it's implementable, when it's something that's tangible and you can turn it into activity. That is the best thing to do with the things that you're hearing right now. Thank you so much for joining our broadcast. We couldn't do what we do without you. Uh, this is a time where we end and just give our appeal to you. Would you consider blessing the thing that blessed you, pouring into the thing that poured into you? You know, there is a principle that cannot be violated. God, the Bible says, God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. Well, you've heard that even if you're not in church. But it says God will not be mocked. In other words, if you can get something out of it that you weren't willing to invest in it, then God is mocked. Why? Because when he created the earth, he put it on a system that was cyclical. In other words, God only created you know, beans and tomatoes and cucumbers and potatoes and corn and all and the livestock to count one time. Why? If not, he'd have to come down every season and recreate it. But he put it on a cycle so that everything feeds each other. In other words, the well that you drink from, would you consider turning back around and replenishing that well? We don't sell ads, we don't sell commercials. We didn't stop and try to get you to buy anything. This is just to let you know all the messages are, on, uh, are, are online for a certain amount of time, then they drop in our archives. You can get them in the vault if you wanna do it digitally or CDs and DVDs are still available. But how do we do what we do? How do we buy the time? How do we have the technology? How do we pay the engineers? How do we do what we do? It's because people like you enjoy it and are faithful to turn around and say, I want to bless back. Thank you. If you're considering being a first time giver, whether it be one time or a covenant partner, maybe you want to be a part of the family. I welcome you, whatever it is God's put on your heart to do. We want to give you this gift to say thank you for being a part, even if it's just for this time of this wonderful ministry. We got a lot of great people and God's given us a lot of great opportunities to do things we've never done before and you're helping make that possible. And I'm so grateful to you. For those that have been giving for weeks, months, years, decades, I'm dating myself, I know. We're grateful to you too. Thank you for caring enough about us and believing in us. And together we can continue as long as God gives us breath to take this message and blow it all over the world. God bless you. Check me out on Facebook. Check us out at iChurch. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter. We're talking all the time. And until next time we get to do this, God bless you. I'll see you soon. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.